Hello students and welcome back to the classroom. Tim here again from Lessons on the Web and today we are doing two-handed piano playing and more specifically I'm going to give you some tips on two-handed piano playing as well as some examples and some exercises that you really need to take advantage of to develop your two-handed piano playing to really get over you know that struggles that a lot of us have when first putting it hands together and especially playing different rhythms and different notes while hands together. So if you struggle with this, this lesson's for you. So we'll get right on to it. First, we're going to start with some general tips I have about playing with both hands. The very first one I have is learn the piece, example, scale, arpeggio, whatever you're trying to learn, learn it hand separate first if you are a beginner. And then once you kind of feel like you have it down hand separate, then put it hands together. Now this will help you at first because it will just give you less things to have to really concentrate on think about. Because if you really know what you're playing with both hands individually, it'll just be a little bit easier to connect it when you put hands together. It may sound simple, may sound straightforward, but it's always a good tip for beginners. Now as you get more advanced, you may want to start playing two-handed right off the bat, but by then you should be a bit more comfortable playing with both hands. Okay, general tip number two is play slowly. This is probably the most important tip because probably most of my students make this mistake, including myself at times. You want to slow down your playing when you're playing something that you find difficult. So whether it's playing with both hands, playing a difficult section, playing a piece that's a little bit above your level, you need to play slowly, probably the most important thing. You don't want to rush through the music. You want to have patience and you want to have a level of what we call musical maturity, which is really not, you know, not rushing through things, not trying to get to the goal too soon, really approaching this logically and patiently and consistently, most importantly. Okay, number three is when first learning to play hands together, avoid examples with complicated rhythms or just ones that examples that are too complicated in general, whether it's pitches, rhythms, or anything about it. If it's something that's way over your head, you're just not going to be able to play it hands together. You want to play something probably a bit on the easy side when you first start to learn how to play with both hands together. Okay, on with the resources that I suggest you practice from, or the things I suggest you practice. Number one, and you're going to sigh and maybe think this is boring, but scales. So learning your scales is important, but playing your scales, especially syncing up both hands, is very uh, important in developing your dexterity and your ability to play with both hands up and down the keyboard. And it's really good for finger crosses and things like that. But like with everything else, like I said, is you want to learn them hands separate first. You want to learn them one scale at a time. And then once you feel like you can play the scale, you know, both hands separately pretty well, then you want to put it hands together. And remember, the important point, the most important point, is what? You want to go slowly so you can play them together. If you are all over the place, you need to slow it way, way down. Okay, now I have a special little exercise I made up. I'm probably not the first person to make this up, but I really think it would help those of us who right now are thinking about the scales and be like, oh, well, Tim, I already know how to play the scales very well. I can play, you know, the same note at the same time. I don't struggle as much with that. It's playing different rhythms between the hands that I struggle with. If, if you're one of those people that says, you know, says that to yourself, then here's a little exercise to make the scales a little bit more challenging and to develop the interdependence between both hands. So what I, the one thing I want to suggest is start with the key of C. Make it easy, right? You don't have to worry about the sharps or the flats. So what you want to do is you want to play the scale in whole notes with your left hand and half notes with your right hand. What does that mean really? Well, that means for every left hand note, I'm playing two right hand notes and of course it'll be a little slower and then when I'm moving to the second left hand note I'm going to play the next two right hand notes now when you get to the top of the scale up here you come back down 
Oops. Oh, yeah. Let me start again. Sorry about that. And then when you get to the top, you turn it back around. And then when you get here, you're still going to go all the way up to the left hand, top of the left hand scale, while still coming down, and then meeting in the center. And if you time it out right, you'll wind up in the center. If you're off a little bit, you know, your notes won't be exactly right. And then what you want to do is then speed it up a little bit. Maybe you could do um, half notes in the left hand and quarter notes in the right hand. Once you're feeling a little bit more confident with it, just like that. So that will get you playing different rhythms with each hand. Now, what I want you to do, and I highly suggest, is flip it around the other way. Play the longer notes with your right hand while playing two notes with your left hand. And like I said, at first you want to start with whole notes in your right hand and then half notes in your left hand. And it will seem a bit slow at first. that starts to get too easy well you can always speed it up right you can start to play you know eighth notes maybe with your right hand and quarter notes with your left hand so it'll be twice as fast whoops let me do it again not bad and then see as fast as you can get it maybe you're gonna do 16th notes which is four of these for every note I have in the left hand if I'm playing quarter notes I think it was off time a little bit. Try it again. I did it right that time, and I know it because I landed on middle C at the exact same time. And then you want to go through this, and you want to do this with a lot of your scales, as many of them as you can do. quicker notes in the left hand, slower notes in the right hand, and I know I hit, I had it right because I hit G at the same time. Now if you're doing it the opposite way, where you have the quicker notes in the right hand, you'll hit G together at the same time, or whatever scale you're on. So if you're doing D, you know, it'll be like that. So I suggest you practice that little tip or that little exercise and do it in as many of the scales as you can. If you have a lot of trouble doing that, remember, the key thing is to slow it down. Start out, like I said, with just whole notes in the left hand, half notes in the right hand, counting slowly. You know, and so forth. And then remember, you know you're hitting the right note, or you got it right if you end on either the outside notes of the key that you're in. So if you're in the key of C, you'll hit, land on C. If you're doing it the other way, you will land on the middle note together. So just know that you'll be hitting the same note at the same time if you have it right and you have it synced up correctly. Oh, we're going to talk about hand and exercises, which we do quite frequently on this program, this uh, live stream that we have. So if you don't know about hand and exercises, that's my website, by the way, but we are going to hand and exercises. You just type it into Google and you hit enter. And like the first one, piano, hand and piano online. Now, this is a great resource for two handed piano playing examples. However, you may be seeing these, you know, you can download them, obviously. You may be looking at this and saying, well, these are the same note at the same time, kind of like the scales. But that's fine. That will still develop your two-handed piano playing, being able to sync them up. And every exercise develops a certain part of your hand. So the better you are at this kind of stuff, the better you will be at two-handed piano playing. 
because playing the same note at the same time in sync is still a coordination skill to have. So you want to practice these. So you can practice these. There's tons of them for free. Uh, our live stream attendee, Rich, always talks about a book he has on hand. So there are many great books out there. It's probably maybe even a little bit better if you have the book than this. I know the options on this website are limited a little bit, but you know, it's actually a really good free resource. And then there's many, many exercises, as you can see. You can see, you know, that there are 20, and then you can obviously continue there. And then you can also look at, uh, play them in different keys. So you can play them. In, in the key of G and the key of D, they have them written here um, somewhere. I think when you click on the exercise and then you scroll down, It'll say, uh, yeah, different key. So I get to get it in like the key of D flat. Should be a little bit hard, but hey, it might be a really good practice. So practice these and practice them often. Learn maybe one at a time, one a week, for as many weeks as it takes. So if there's 40 of them, I think there's 30, but there might be more than that actually. But uh, so if, it, if there's 40 of them, it'll take you 40 weeks to play through all of them. And then again, you only want to move on really to the next one once you feel comfortable playing the one before. So if it takes you longer than a week, uh, don't fret over that, but make some kind of goal, whether to learn one a week, one every two weeks. And then every once in a while, if you go outside of the goal a little bit, so long as you come back, uh, you will be in really, really good shape. So if you go to pianoexercises.org slash exercises slash Cherney, Cherney, by the way, C-Z-E-R-N-O-Y, uh, he has a ton, a ton, a ton on this website, actually. This actually isn't his website, but he wrote all these exercises. This is a wonderful selection of exercises, particularly, it's either the first selection or the second selection is what I really recommend for this lesson. Again, you want to look through these and find something that's appropriate to your playing level. This is it. Okay, you see these now. Be careful that these are both in treble clef, so you need to be used to playing doing that. Oops. And they're just like little tunes, little exercises to develop your two-handed coordination. They have very simple rhythms between either of the hands so that makes it a little bit easier now that doesn't mean they'll be absolutely easy it might take you quite a few playthroughs to get these right and you want to of course what is the tip of the day by the way play slowly right and use the fingering they give you there's ni they're nice enough to give you most of the fingering it's always hard to play and talk at the same time but go through these you know you want to do maybe one a day again or maybe even one a week depending on how quickly you learn and besides the fact that they're both in double treble clef which you'll get used to they are very very handy exercises for developing you know your interdependence between both hands if you are more interested if you have the scale thing down where you can play both hands in parallel same notes at the same time is what i mean by that and you're looking for more of a challenge but not overwhelming like you may try fur release or you may try a lot of other you know classical piano music and you find it's too difficult to play hands together or maybe even a lot of songs are too difficult you know work your way up go through the things i talked about today you want to go through your scales you want to do the little exercise I gave you for those. That will take you quite some time. You want to add in Hannon into your exercise routine, which we've talked about quite often. And Charity, so through this website, pianoexercises.org slash exercises slash Charity. So that's really it for the two-handed playing today. If you have anything you'd like to add, you know, whether you're watching the recording of this or you're attending tonight, just let me know. And I could very well make a follow-up to this lesson, of course. If you're ever interested in learning more about the piano than ever before, over on my website, pianolessonsontheweb.com, I have a ton of courses over there for you. And I actually have, coming soon, not exactly right now because I'm still planning it out, there's actually going to be an exclusive live stream for Academy students. And it might even be more than once a week. 
but I'm going to start with once a week, you know, inter integrate that into my schedule pretty well. And this will really give an additional chance for you to communicate with me. On the website, we're going to talk about even more advanced topics, even a lot of tips we won't on the YouTube channel at this time. Hey, students, check out some other videos that I recommend on the channel and subscribe to make sure you get all the updates when they get released. We have new videos coming out every Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.